Hello student, you're welcome to a level, specifically to advanced level mathematics and most specifically to applied mathematics. You know that we have two papers in mathematics, that is pure math and applied mathematics. So I welcome you very much to applied mathematics. In this part of mathematics, we shall be looking at very many topics broadly categorized in two three major parts and that is um, statistics and probability we have numerical methods and then mechanics so down is a list of subtopics that will be finding under statistics and the probability please can pause the video and read through likewise we shall be having those topics in numerical methods and lastly we shall be having these topics in mechanics 14 of them, oh, they seem to be very many, but they must be covered in only two years, depending on where you are. So, I welcome you very, very much. Um, To begin with, let's begin by introducing ourselves, and I'll be introducing myself first, then you'll be introducing yourself to your neighbors that you're with there, that you're learning with, and I pray that during the course of this tutorial, and uh, as you go along the way, shall be shall be doing some calculations, asking ourselves questions here and there, trying. So, please always feel free to pause, replay, and um, do write down something. So, to begin with, uh, teacher Taban Hakim is my name, and I'll be taking you through applied mathematics. I will not be alone. You'll be finding other teachers will be coming in along the way so i'll be teaching maybe a topic then another team may come and teach another topic all maybe teaching numerical methods all mechanics and we shall be moving together my email is there always feel free to email me in case of anything a question and so on and please always do take part in the forums we have forums in each unit in each subunit so you can always simply write a message down there and your friends can always reply to you or even the teacher can always be responding to your queries along the way. You can always WhatsApp me, you can always call me on any of those numbers there. And um, yes, we are online. So please, can you introduce yourself to your neighbor? Say something about yourself. Okay, let's go on. So, we shall be looking at the first topic and that is descriptive statistics from this image you can see that statistics is all about organization of data we have a collection of data you can see what like interpretation of data and um, in addition to that we can see some terms that we're going to be seeing in our topic we can see terms like data we can see terms like analysis descriptive can see terms like um, population among others so this is just like um, one image explaining or describing what statistics is but let's look at it in details so before we go to statistics in details let's first of all look at the objectives of this topic here and the coming lessons as well so by the end of this topic, every learner should be able to collect, organize, and analyze data using the different statistical methods. We saw this in the overview. And the specific objectives, this is um, a general objective. And the specific objective, objectives <coughs> can be like defining what statistics is, um, differentiating between grouped and ungrouped data, constructing frequency tables, and using them to come up with the histograms and uh, when I mention histograms see in our lower classes we're used to histograms of equal class width this time I shall be looking at those of different class widths we shall be seeing that then um, frequency polygons what are they and how do we draw them can we draw this word here spampos means drawing a frequency polygon on top of the histogram we shall be able to draw frequency Cumulative frequency curves, what you call the all gives, and then of course interpreting that, then calculating the mean, the mode, the median, 
of the grouped and ungrouped data as well. Estimate the mode from the histogram and then estimate the median from the OGIV among other objectives. So the requirements of this class, we should be having a notebook and a course book. A course book is like um, a textbook. At the bottom of this video, you can get a link of one of the textbooks that I'll be using and you have a look at it. Then you should be having a long ruler and of course pens and pencils. You must be having a mathematical set, a calculator, and of course internet to do some research. So let's enjoy the lesson together. So let's begin by looking at some of the terms that we use in statistics. The first one is the word statistics itself. What do you think this is? You can pause the video and think about it. You can write the definition of what you think it is all about. Okay, so we define statistics as the science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to assist in making more effective decisions. In other words, the most important words are highlighted here. Statistics is all about collecting of data. This is collecting, sorry for this. It is all about organizing the collected data. It's all about how do you present the collected data, that one that, one that you have organized, and then how analyzing that data, and of course, interpret that data there. The word data itself simply means numbers, and this world is filled up with numbers. So the work that we have to do is to make meaning of that data, of those numbers that you have before us. So that is what statistics is all about. So by the end of the lesson, by the end of the topic, you should be able to at least do some research and uh, collect data, inter organize it, present it, analyze it, and then interpret it. That is what statistics is all about. Someone may ask a question. Someone may ask a question that what is the importance of this? Why do we study about statistics? The reasons are very many. And let me just give you around four minutes. You can pause the video and you list down, write down at least five reasons as to why statistics is very important in our life. Okay, that is very good. You've done something great. So, we said about statistics simply because data is everywhere. Of course, that is not a very specific reason. It is simply a broad reason. And uh, the most important one is that no matter what your career is going to be, you will always make professional decisions that involve data. Very many of them. So, an understanding of statistical methods will help you to make these decisions effectively. Of course, I've given you broad reasons, but there are specific reasons as seen in these two images here. Look at this image. Games, sports. Why is data important? Why is statistics important? Think about it. You've heard of coaches preferring to buy a given player, Ronaldo, Messi. Why? Because history has shown that Maybe in a given number of games, so and so can score a given number of goals. So, an average number, a data that can be given, data that can be given can be useful in making important decisions. If you do betting, you know what I'm talking about. So this is in sports. Look at the second image here. It's all about business. If you are the MD of a certain company, and the data is always flowing in the cash flow are you making profits are you making losses and how are you going to use that data that you're getting if you're making very many profits means that your business is doing good meaning that you can even come up with more branches if you're making losses maybe you can get other workers who are more qualified who are more competent maybe you can close the business maybe you can close a given branch and so on so that is why data is very important and even you as a person you need data, you need statistics. For example, following up your budget at home. Are you spending much on a given quantity or given commodity? Are you spending less? If you need to build some, something, use the budget that you have. Use a review of the data that you have to make a given decision. So that's why statistics is very important and is all around us. We can't avoid it. 
So knowledge of this is very important to you as an individual, to your community and the country as large. So after having looked at some of the reasons as to why statistics is very important to our lives, let's now end this part of the topic by looking at um, some of the types of statistics and then some of the terms that we do use. We shall be looking at some few of them and then we shall be looking at the others as we go along the way. So for example, types of statistics, what are they? We have basically two of them. Number one is called descriptive statistics and this is what we shall be looking at at this level. This one is all about um, summarizing, presenting data in an informal way. In other words, you simply collect or uh, you collect the data, you organize the data, you present it, you analyze it, and then you simply leave it there. For example, saying that the model of the the model height of the students in the school is this, the model age is this. And uh, we normally use graphs like the bar graph, the ogive, the histogram, and others to represent or to present this data here. At the same time, we have what we call inferential statistics. From the word inference, it means conclusion, meaning that this part of statistics is all about drawing conclusions. So the method is used to determine something about a population on the basis of a sample. We're going to see what a sample is. In other words, you have a big population, we're going to see what that is, and then you pick out a small sample out of that population, then you study it, and then that sample gives a general idea of what you are looking at. So among the terms that we do have, we have what you call population. What is a population? Of course, when we talk about population in your society, it means the human the human race, maybe, for example. But in statistics, the word population simply means the entire set of individuals or objects of interest or measurements obtained from all individuals or objects of interest. For example, can I say that um, a population of bulbs produced in a factory. For example, a population of students in a given school. That is a population. And then a sample, a sample is simply like a subset of the population. In other words, it is a portion or part of the population of interest. Let me use this diagram here to illustrate more of this. So we have this diagram here. We're having this population. And this population can be like, for example, um, beans in a garden, for example, trees in a forest, for example, a population of birds in the zoo. That is what you call a population, a group of interest. And then the sample is simply like a subset of that population there. And uh, we can define a population as a whole set of items that are of interest. And I've, um, I've said that um, Population doesn't mean only humans or animals within a country or an ecosystem, but it could be anything else. Bulbs in a factory, for example, you can be studying about bulbs produced in a given factory, and maybe you're interested in the number of damaged bulbs. Maybe the number of bigger bulbs. That could be like a sample set. Or it could be like, for example, all cars in the UK, all cars in Uganda, all cars in Kenya. And maybe looking at um, the the Benz model as a sample. So that is what population and sample is all about. Of course, we shall be looking at other terms as we move along the way. I cannot explain all of them. For example, we have what called data. I will explain what data is. Just numbers. We can have what you call a data set. We can have what you call elements can have term, terms like um, variables, observations, can have raw data, grouped data, can have terms like census, terms like uh, discrete, and very many others. But at the moment, let me stop here and uh, it has been good 
having you around let's meet in the next part see you then in the next topic thank you